Hi guys, Mike here. Today on KMRD Radio Stuff, we're going to look at BioNO. All right, guys, today we're going to be looking at the BioNO BLF1220A. It's a 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And uh, before we really get started, I have to say a big thank you to Kevin from BioNO. Uh, I reached out to him uh, about a couple months ago, maybe a month before Hamvention, uh, and asked if he'd be interested in sending me a battery for review on the channel. And uh, he was uh, very gracious in sending me this 20 amp hour battery. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kevin. I am really geeked to have this. So the biggest question that I get on the channel by far is what battery am I using when I'm uh, operating portable? As most of you guys know, I am not a QRP guy. Uh, I'm, I'm usually running 90 watts uh, and I need a battery that can deliver <laughs> a good amount of amperage and voltage and, and really capacity. And uh, in, in my very early videos, that were filmed at this very park, I was using a sealed lead acid uh, eight amp hour battery. And that just wasn't cutting it because sealed lead acid is horrible. So, um, so I looked into other solutions and lithium iron phosphate was the way to go. So I went the route of making one. The reason I was so interested in BioNO was because not everybody is looking to make their own battery pack, putting cells together, soldering them together, uh, soldering the BMS and hooking it all up and, and this, that, and the other thing. You kind of want more just a plug and play type thing. So BioNO has definitely made a name for themselves in the ham radio community. And, uh, you know, really, I just, I wanted to try one because uh, I'd never used one. So um, I wanted to have another source for batteries that I could tell viewers is a good bit of kit. So uh, that's, that's why I really ended up looking uh, into BioNO. Uh, but I also wanted something, uh, you know, I had a couple other expectations. It, it had to be easily sourced. Getting uh, other batteries, I got mine from China and it took probably six weeks to get. Uh, they can be sourced uh, locally, but they cost more money. Easily sourced. I wanted something that wasn't from China, some place that had great customer service, something that was made in the USA, and BioNO uh, fit all that criteria. So some of the physical characteristics, this 20 amp hour battery, first off, it only weighs 5.4 pounds. So that is freaking amazing right there. It adds a little bit to, of weight to my bag when I'm going portable. Not much, I had a couple pounds, so it fits in that big bag that I carry with all my crap just fine. So, but it's, it's, uh, I mean, you can see it, it's in my hand. It's, it's as big as my head. It's six and a half inches by four and a half inches by about three and a half inches. I'm not really sure what's inside of it. I imagine there's eight cells in here. I'm not sure um, what type of cells or where they get them or anything. They're, they're kind of secretive uh, about what's inside here. You've got two leads here. You've got your power pole lead. That's for your power output. And then you have your, uh, DC barrel connector. This is what you hook your charger up to. This is hooked up to the, to the uh, charging connection for the BMS. So uh, the battery did come with a charger. Uh, it's a very basic charger. It's basically just a, a plug with a, a block that's probably about that big. I don't know, five or six inches or so. Just kind of a little wall wart type thing that's not a wall wart. And it has a red and a green uh, light on it. Those do not indicate charged or not. They indicate either constant current or constant voltage. So you really aren't clear as to when your battery is fully charged. So I haven't used it. The only thing I use from it is this cable. So I cut the barrel connector off of the charger and put power poles on it for a couple reasons. One, because I do still have that other charger. And if I need to charge more than one battery at a time, I can use that charger and my other charger. The other reason I was going, so everything I get DC, I cut the, I cut the power uh, connectors off and put power poles on it. But this lead is hot and I didn't want to cut this not being able to disconnect it inside because there's no way to get to the BMS. So I opted to leave this barrel connector on and instead uh, just use this um, little pigtail to, to charge it. So 
Uh, I really just wasn't trying to shock myself or damage anything. So otherwise I would have definitely cut that off. Back to chargers. This is the charger that I use. This is a, uh, from a brand called High Tech. Uh, there will be links in the description to all of this stuff. The, the charger that comes with the BioNO charges anywhere from two to five amps, depending on, I suppose, the internal resistance of the battery and um, you know, how much of a charge they'll take. Uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries typically will take a higher amperage current than that, but they recommend between two and five amps. So um, I typically charge my batteries at a lower amperage just because they'll last longer. But I prefer this, it has a nice LED readout screen. I can set uh, the voltage per cell. So I charge them at 3.65 volts per cell. I can set the amperage. So I'll usually charge, I usually charge my other battery at one amp. This one I'll charge at two amps just because the manual says charge between two and five amps. So, but if I wanted to charge it faster, I could bump this up to five amps and it's just gonna, it's gonna constantly push whatever amperage I tell this thing to do until the internal resistance gets high enough to where the, the voltage is, is almost at peak and then it just, it starts dying down. So it'll be like two amps and then it'll, you know, one and a half, one and a quarter, blah, 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 and, and it'll just slowly go down. And then you'll hear a doo 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 when it's done charging. So I like this. So another thing was price. The first battery I got, I really, I really started getting into portable radio and I really started learning about batteries and wanted to build one. It is more expensive that way, however, oddly enough. My other lithium iron phosphate battery is only a 10 amp hour battery, keep in mind. The cells themselves, four 10 amp hour cells, it was like a hundred bucks. I forget exactly, it was, it was about a year ago that I got them and I, I had to order them from China. I could have got them I could have gotten them in America. It would have cost a little bit more money. There's a place in California that sells them, but so it was a hundred bucks for the cells, roughly, probably 120 ish. Another $50 for the BMS, which is the battery management system. And then this charger was about 65 bucks. So all said and done, roughly $215 to build your own lithium iron phosphate 10 amp hour battery. This BioNO battery retails on their website for like 200 bucks. So you get twice the battery for a little bit less money. So kind of a no brainer there. So uh, really another reason why I specifically wanted uh, to look at BioNO batteries over there. There's, there's a few other brands out there, but really BioNO seems to be in my research, really the one that, that I kept coming back to because of really the, the, the customer service that a lot, of, a lot of other folks have talked about. You know, if, if, if anybody's had problems with them or something wasn't working out, it, from my understanding, they're, they're kind of just no questions. You know, we'll send you another one or here's what we can do to troubleshoot it or send it back and we'll fix it or whatever. So um, I myself am in the customer service um, and, and I really, really do appreciate that. So let's go over just a couple things here in the manual really quick. Basically for anyone running portable, unless you're having an amp hooked up to this, uh, you're gonna be fine with what this thing puts out. So the maximum continuous dis discharge current is rated at 40 amps. The maximum peak pulse current is 60 amps for two seconds. So uh, you can really push this thing. My 891 at 100 watts, uh, sideband, maybe 12, maybe, maybe 13 amps it's gonna peak at. So nowhere near that. CW, if you're just laying on it, also digital modes, I think you'll get closer to that 20 amps. I think it's really about 19 that, that the, uh, the 891 is gonna kind of max out at, regardless of what the ASU manual tells you. The protection inside the, the BMS, you're gonna get overcharge, uh, over discharge, over current, uh, and temperature and balancing. So if, if it overcharges, the BMS is just gonna cut it off. Also, if it gets under voltage, um, it, it's gonna cut it off as well. So it protects the cells. You're not, you're not going to be able to hurt them. Not that, not that you're really going to hurt lithium iron phosphate cells to begin with. They just take an absolute beating. A couple of cautionary things. Uh, this is all the fun things that I would like to do with a battery. Don't disassemble it. I want to disassemble it. I want to know what's inside of it. Don't short circuit the positive and the negative terminals. Negative terminals. Well, come on. That's just fun. This one is serious though. Use only lithium iron phosphate compatible chargers. Do not use lead acid battery chargers. 
They charge differently, they're different voltages, they're different chemistries. In a pinch, if you have to put juice into it, yeah, I've done it, but don't expect good results and really don't do it. Don't expose it to the environment. This battery is not sealed. Uh, it's basically a, um, some kind of shrink wrap over, uh, there's like some, some type of uh, cardboard material in here with the cells inside. So, you know, keep it, keep it in a Pelican case or something. If you've got a go box, just keep it out of the weather. And this is a bummer. Don't throw it in a fire and don't dispose of it improperly. Duh. <laughs> uh, a couple notes on charging. Only use 14.6 volt lithium iron phosphate compatible chargers to charge the battery. We mentioned that earlier. Uh, also, fully charge the battery before your first use. And uh, really after every use, you want to fully charge it up again. You don't really have to, but it's a good practice to get into because the way that the BMS inside here works, it's a top balancing BMS. So what, what that means is as you use the battery, the BMS is going to monitor the voltage. So if one, star, one cell starts to get a little bit lower, it's going to pull more current from the other cells to keep everything managed. Well, it's going to do that as well when you, uh, uh, when you charge it. It's going to top balance it. So everything should be... 13.65 volts uh, once the thing is fully charged. Uh, it will drop a little bit after, um, after the charge is settled down. It, the nominal voltage after they're charged and settled down uh, is like 13.3, 13.4, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, they, they charge to 14.6, but then they kind of settle down. So they don't suffer a memory effect. So don't worry about using the battery and uh, you know, having to discharge it completely, charge it all the way up like some of the nickel cadmium batteries and some of the other kind of older technolo uh, technology batteries. So for long-term storage, charge it all the way up and then discharge it down to 50%. That's just kind of how lithium iron phosphate batteries like to, like to stay stored for a long time. I mean, if you're going a week, leave it charged fully, who cares? Uh, one other thing, uh, these particular batteries are not recommended to wire in series or parallel. They're kind of their own standalone thing. The manual says, you know, in a pinch if you have to do it, that's fine, but don't make a habit of it. Uh, I, I would imagine that's just one of the restrictions from the BMS. So I, I, think, I think they're really very well designed and thought out kind of having those limitations on the BMS in order to prolong the life of the cells. A good lithium iron phosphate battery is rated for about 2,000 charge cycles, and uh, that's probably 10 years or so that one of these is going to last you. So yeah, I'm super geeked to have it. Just wanted to show a little bit about it today and introduce it to the channel and talk about it a little bit. This will be the battery that I will be using moving forward. So I plan on abusing the heck out of it and uh, we'll, we'll see a lot more of it. So, so anyway guys, uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you like what you see, hit the bell, uh, share it, like it, all that good stuff. I'm gonna have links, to the links in the description to everything. And uh, thank you so much for watching K at MRD Radio Stuff.